Hey everyone, Dave here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the beginning of our playthrough of A Touch of Evil Dark Gothic deck building game. And we are going to be playing the Colonial Horror uh, the standalone expansion for this game. So you can either play it by itself, which is what we're going to do, or you can actually combine these cards with the original Dark Gothic deck building game to expand that. So let's set the premise of what's going on here. It's the dawn of the 19th century. There's a fictional town called Shadowbrook, and there are a number of these villains that are terrorizing the countryside and spreading evil, and so they are looking for some monster hunters to come in and drive away the evil and restore peace and tranquility to the countryside. And so we will be playing as the monster hunters, the heroes in the story, and they will be working to defeat these villains. And there's a stack of three villains that during setup we have chosen. Uh, there are three different levels, level one, level two, level three. There's three of each. I shuffled up each one and we put them in a stack. So the level three with the most powerful ones are on the bottom. There's a two and then there's a one which we will reveal here shortly. During the setup, what we're doing is we're taking all of the like gear cards and allies and minions and events, everything. We're shuffling them up and we're going to create the main deck. And there are some other decks that we have along the way here as well. We have a common, a common minion or a common enemy called the Hungry Dead that we can face. And we'll go over all these numbers in a minute. And it will tell you different abilities of what you can do when you fight them. And then there are also additional cards at the top that we will be able to acquire that will make us stronger. They're called training cards. And what they will do, they are actually um, enhanced versions of cards that will start off in our starting deck. Then we also have something called a dark secret, which we will get into. And those are usually nasty things that will come into our deck. And a lot of times you will get them when you try to influence the town elders because if you're familiar with a touch of evil in that particular game a lot of the town elders are harboring these secrets uh, they don't want people to know what's going on so we bring that into the game and then there's also these shocking discoveries which are events that will pop up at the appropriate times and you'll see how that works anyways we have our two heroes that are, we are going to be playing. They've been randomly selected out of a number of, uh, there's five of them that come in the game. Let's take a look at them and we'll talk about what their cards mean. So the first hero that we have is Argo Blackwell and he is the master hunter. And let's get a little bit of information about him, a little bit of his backstory. And so he's a masterful soldier, scholar of dark knowledge and hunter of all things evil. Argo Blackwell has only ever known the cold realities of a supernatural world. As a young boy in distant Europe, his family was massacred by werewolves. Only he was saved by the intervention of a valiant hunter, a drifter, tracking the beasts through the mountains and dispatching the entire pack single-handed. Swearing his life to vengeance upon all foul creatures of the night, Argo honed his skills over 40 years, learning everything about the dark monsters of the world and how to kill them. So, he is definitely well equipped to take on the dangers that are we're going to face in Dark Gothic. So, uh, that's just a little bit of uh, his backstory that I actually got from the uh, Touch of Evil game itself. When we look at his card, and there's different information that is presented on here. First of all, we have the starting deck. And so this is going to be the cards that are going to make up his deck. There's going to be a total of 12 cards. So you see where it says combat, cunning, spirit, and honor. And those cards are going to be like this, for example, strength of cunning. And we'll, so we'll give you one of that particular skill, this cunning. Well, he is going to have three of these cards in his deck. We have Strength of Spirit is going to give him a Spirit attribute. Uh, he's going to have two of those. And then we have Strength of Combat. And this is going to give you one combat. And that is, he's going to have five of those. And then finally, we have two of these Honor cards. And you see this Silver Orb. This doesn't represent anything. It can be used as a Wild, too. Um, 
fill in a need for something else as long as um, and we'll talk about this a little bit more but this could be used as anything and then also he has the ability to draw a card and he actually has two honor cards in his deck and then all of the heroes will actually have a special ability and so for him it says known know thine enemy and the first time you play a minion each turn draw a card well a minion is a card type something that we will be uh, encountering in this main row of cards and so one of the things that he's going to be looking to do is to try to defeat minions and put them into his deck to make him more powerful and by abil the ability to draw more cards he's going to be able to play more on each turn it's going to make him more powerful and the other player in the game is going to be Thomas Harrow and he is the swarthy courier and so since a young age Thomas has been a traveler a loner and a scout he makes a living as a courier forever on the move with a scarred face and a dead eye, Thomas has always looked out for himself above all else. Riding into town with a special delivery for one of the elders of Shadowbrook, he finds himself wrapped up in the mysterious and deadly events that begin to unfold around him. So that's a little bit of his story. And then if we look at his particular uh, starting deck, he doesn't really have any honor. Uh, but he is, seems to be well-rounded in combat, cunning, and spirit. And then he's got two different abilities. First of all, he's got information, so all allies cost one less, uh, basically a wild, less to acquire. So we can choose one of the attributes, and we'll look at those cards shortly, uh, for him to acquire. And then also, secrets upon secrets, so when drawing a shocking discovery, take two and choose which to use. That's going to uh, be good because a lot of times the shocking discoveries are bad, so he can mitigate that and try to make things where they're not so terrible. All right, so that's just a little bit about the two heroes that are in the game. We're going to uh, start playing here shortly. I just wanted to uh, go over one particular thing here. Um, I'm going to reveal these starting cards in our deck. And so there we are going to, um, and I will explain what some of the keywords are that are out here, and a little bit of some of the things that are out here um, in terms of keywords. So we'll take a look at the first three cards that are in the uh, main card deck, and there's information that is on here. So first of all we have the the catacombs and this is the on the side here is the cost it's going to take to essentially acquire this card and put it into your deck so we're going to need two of the spirit two cunning and two strength and then two of one other resource by themselves in order to take this now this is a location so that's important, this is the card type, and then down here you'll see this where it says mystery, and this says detro destroy the top five cards from the main deck. Now destroying cards are going to go into an area called the crypt, and then later on what's going to happen is if this card is played out of your hand, it will choose a card from the crypt to play, afterward place that card on the bottom of the main deck. And down at the bottom, this is going to tell you how many of these investigation points this is worth. So. Uh, when the game starts, the initial mystery gray text, if this is one of the original cards that comes out, it does not trigger. Otherwise, uh, we would destroy the top five cards of the main deck, and then this would continue to go on here. So, um, it's an expensive card, but this can be useful because as cards are destroyed and essentially going out of play, we will be able to uh, fish them out and put them into the main deck. Now, the next thing that we have, we have these ghost pirates and here is the type it is a ghost and it's also a minion now minions are important because this is something that argo blackwell is going to want to um, be able to acquire to put into his deck and it's roaming meaning at the end of a player's turn this card is going to move towards the right and eventually if it makes it to the last space and nobody has purchased this by the end uh, it will end up going into the shadows. Now the shadows are bad because if we ever have 10 cards go into the shadows, um, we will lose the game. And then we also have over here this militia, militia soldier, and it will tell you up in the top that it is 
a, let's see, here we go. It's um, the Minuteman, and he is an ally, and what his cost is, and then he's worth two investigation points. So allies, this would be for this one, for example, um, it would cost three strength. However, for Thomas Harrow, he would only have to pay two strength in order to get him because of his ability in dealing with allies. Now, there are some other cards that are down the row, so I'll just go ahead and move my camera down so you can see. And the last three cards that are in the row, we have, again, we have another uh, minion here, this Vengeful, Vengeful Succubus. Now, this is something new in the, um, in the Colonial Horror expansion, and these are like um, cursed costs. So what this means here, if you see this red around it, is we would actually have to destroy that attribute in order to play, for, uh, you know, in order to pay for this to get this card. So this would cost us one cunning. We would have to destroy that card in order to take it. And then, uh, but here are some other things that we'll, we will get. We will get uh, one strength, and we will get one cunning. And down at the bottom, this says strike. Now this game can be played either. Um, cooperatively or competitively. Most of the time it's playing competitively. Here we're playing cooperatively. Usually when you play a strike card it will affect the other players. However, in a cooperative version of the game these strike cards will affect um, both, they will affect all the players including the one who played the card. So that's something to uh, be concerned about. Uh, you know, if we're choosing to get these cards uh, if we're going to play them or not. Sometimes it's going to be, uh, we're going to have no choice on that. Then we also have events. Down here we have the plan of attack, and uh, this will just tell you, and then um, that it's an event, and then this is the text that's on here, so this will gain us two of one particular skill towards fighting a villain. And then finally we do have uh, gear that's out here. We have Book of the Occult, and we have the cost there, and then it says book, and then this says here, roll the omen die, and you will gain uh, cunning, uh, basically as the uh, equal to the, die, the roll of the die. So there is something that I have not spoken about yet, and that is this omen die right here. And it's a six-sided die, and it also has, so it's one through five, and then actually it's one through four, and then we have two faces that have this skull on here. Well, the skull counts as a one, I believe. Uh, but also, it's bad when uh, this roll when this comes up because uh, there are going to be certain times when we get the omen. Uh, this face will show up. That cards will go into the shadows. Now, in a cooperative game, at the beginning of the start player's turn, so once you know, at the beginning of the round. He's going to roll the omen die for each of the minions that are in this row. And if the car if there is a card that shows up, I mean if there's a skull that shows up, then we are going to have a um, that card is going to get added to the shadows. So we have lots of different things that are going on here. And finally, what I wanted to do is reveal our first villain. So we have the slasher from below and here's his cost to defeat him it says five plus well let's see what the information is going to be about that he's also a beast so that's important now we have a couple of things here we have what's called the global effect and so this says anytime a location enters the center line roll the omen die on the roll of the skull add it to the shadows so that's going to be uh, something that we are going to have to uh, worry about uh, facing. So every time that a location shows up, we have to roll the die. Oh, and then there's also one other thing here. That, um, with this slasher, it says fight. So this is going to happen. When you choose to fight them, you're going to roll the omen die. The slasher from below requires that much extra combat to defeat. So the minimum is going to be uh, five of one thing plus additional combat. So we're going to have to be well equipped to go after this slasher. So that's a little bit of the different card types, things that are going on here. So this is Argo Blackwell is actually going to be our start player. 
and what will happen is we'll start, we'll shuffle up our starting deck and we will draw six cards. All right, so we have our starting six cards for Argo Blackwell. Uh, one thing that I needed to clarify was that this skull uh, face represents a zero. So let's take a look at what we have. So we have um, a strength of spirit, one, two, um, three strengths of combat, another strength of cunning, and we have this honor, which we can be used as any one thing. Well, let's play that first, and it's going to allow us to draw a card. So we'll have an additional card. So let's look at our skills that what we have and what we can take out in this particular row, knowing that we're going to want to go after minions. So we have um, one strength of combat, two strength of combat, three, four strength of combat, a strength of spirit, and a strength of cunning. And we have this wild. So potentially we have five of these. We could have five combat or we have four combat and two strength or two cunning or any of the mixture of above. So we are going to want to go after minions and the reason why is um, first of all every time that he draws a minion he's going to be able to um, he's going to be able to draw an additional card. Secondly, we don't really want minions on the row because we'll have to roll the omen die and the shadows will show up. Our cards could potentially go in the shadows. So I think um, even though, oh this is bad here, um, this vengeful succubus, every, hero, um, every other hero must destroy a card from hand. Um, I mean, we could use that to um, get rid of our starting cards and have access to better cards, but um, I'm not really sure that I want to go about that route, but if we leave it sit out there, it's going to move and potentially go into the shadows. So, um, and I don't have enough to go after this particular ghost minion there, but I think um, I'm just going to end up biting the bullet with that vengeful succubus. I can choose not to play the card. Maybe I can play it later on. We'll be able to thin out our deck, but it's going to require four strength of combat, which I have those. So I'll go ahead and put these in my discard pile, which will be right in front of me here. And um, I have to pay one strength of cunning, but I have to destroy this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and that will go into the crypt. I'm just going to put the crypt cards right up there. And then this card will immediately go into my discard pile, and a new card will appear. And it's an event this is if I could just reach it. And I still have um, two of something. I don't really have enough to be able to purchase anything else. Although I could um, use this now as a wild. And I will pick up this event here. This plan of attack which will gain me two of a particular skill towards tw fighting a villain. So that's going to be good going up against the slasher from below. And then this card will come out in its place as well as a hunting party. So that is going to be uh, my turn. All of the cards that I played are in the discard pile and then I will draw six new cards. So that's that right there. And now it's going to be Thomas Harrow's turn. So we look at Thomas Harrow's turn and we have, um, let's see, we have a mixed bag of things. So let's put this out here. So I usually like, because we're dealing with three essentially like currencies, I like to put them out in, in the rows. So I have, here's a spirit. We have um, two combat, two cunning, and two spirit. So we have a little bit of each. And then let's see, all allies cost me one less of something to acquire. Well, uh, we do see an ally that's in the row that is going to be useful. It will give us one wild of any resource. So uh, normally it would cost three. I will be able to reduce the cost by one. So I will take these two strength of combats, put those in my discard pile, and we will pick up this militia soldier. And a new card will come out. And it is a, another uh, minion. And I don't think think at this point that I can actually purchase anything else. Um, I don't have enough 
of these skills to buy these training cards, which I didn't get a chance to really talk about, but they have a cost of three of anything, and what they will do is they will give you a better version of what's in your starting hand. Um, so you could, for example, here, spend three strength to uh, basically build up our um, cunning, but we want to, I mean our spirit actually, but we want to, um, you know, this, that's something we're going to be able to do down the road. And any of those gray things, they have to be all of the same type of uh, resource. So not really the most productive turn. However, we did get an ally into the deck, so that's going to be useful. So these cards will just go into our discard pile. And we will draw six new cards right here. So we go back over to Argo Blackwell, and the first thing that we need to do is we need to roll the Omen die for each of the minions that are in the row. And the other thing is that um, I forgot that at the end of this turn, this pirate would have moved from Argo Blackwell's turn, and then he would have moved again after Thomas Harrow's turn. I forgot that the roaming, they will move. So if he gets to the end and moves off, then he will go into the shadows. But we will start here with this one, this feral kin. We'll roll the die, and it comes up with a four. We are safe, and then we will roll the ghost pirates, and it rolled a two. So we are safe there as well. But we need to get some of those minions out of the way. So we look in our hand here with our six cards, and actually only have five cards. I forgot I drew one. So what I would end up having to do is shuffle up my... Um, the rest of the cards in my discard pile to form a deck. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick. All right, and we will draw an additional card. So we should have six cards in our hand, which we do. Uh, we have another one of those honor cards, which we will allow me to draw a card. So that's good. And let's see what we have. We have a combat, spirit, Cunning, there's another combat, another cunning, another spirit. We have two of each, essentially, and then this one wild. So again, we are going to want to go after minions, um, and I don't like this ghost pirate going across the way. So we will take our strength of spirit. Argo Blackwell is going to use his strength of spirit and his one honor, and he will go ahead and defeat this ghost pirate. So this will go into his discard pile and a new card comes out and it is another minion. Another roaming minion, these smugglers. So now I have two, um, two strength and I have two cunning. I don't have enough to do anything else on this particular turn, so these are going to go into the discard pile as well, and it will now go back over to Thomas Harrow's turn. So we pick up his cards and we look and we see what we have here. We have a strength of spirit, strength of combat, strength of cunning. Here's another spirit, another cunning, another strength. So we have two of each. Now, um, allies cost him one less to acquire. Right now there are no allies that are out there. Um, and so, the only thing that we can do here, we don't have enough to purchase any of the cards in this row here. We don't have enough to go after the these uh, training cards up here. However, we can go after this common minion, the Hungry Dead. And so when we fight one, the, the fight ability says destroy a card you have played this turn or a card from the center line, except a minion or a card with a global effect. This card is never acquired and may never be destroyed or discarded in any way. So what I can do then is use, I can spend one of each of these things that I have done, spend one of these each, and it says destroy a card I have played this turn or a card from the center line. Um, and so I'm looking at a card that may be something that I cannot, uh, that's it's just going to sit out there and may not be useful for a while. Or I can just decide to uh, go after, you know, start destroying cards from my hand, you know, in my discard pile. Something that I just played this turn. I, I don't know if I'm going to want to do that, but I think... Um, We've got a couple of minions that are out there. I, 
I don't know if I really want to do that or not. I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is destroy one of his Strength of Spirit cards for that particular thing. And then the, I will go ahead and fight that Hungry Dead again using these three cards. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and think I will destroy this... Um, Oh, it's this feral kin. Um, because this way you roll the die and you're going to end up destroying a lot of cards that you played this turn. And I don't necessarily want to destroy too many cards. So he will go away there and then this will get replaced right away. And there's a mystery. So it says, um, every hero, it's an event, every hero must destroy a card in their discard pile. So now we have to go through and get rid of cards that are here. I think, unfortunately, Thomas Harrow will give up one of his strength of combats that will get destroyed and over here Argo Blackwell has um, what is he the strongest and he's the strongest in combat so we will go ahead and destroy one of his combat cards as well and that will be his turn also now uh, it says whenever oh that was not a location that was an event all right so that's the end of there, uh, Thomas Harrow's turn. So he's going to go ahead and shuffle up his cards and draw six new ones. All right, it's back to Argo Blackwell's turn. And so what we need to do now is roll the omen die for each number of the minions. Oh, and the smugglers should have moved over. So we're going to, uh, let's see. No, the smugglers moved after Argo Blackwell. He didn't buy a card there, so the smugglers would have moved again here. Well, it's almost to the end. If we nobody picks him up after this turn, it's going to go into the shadows. But we're going to roll for the minion, and we rolled a skull. So that means that this card will then go into the shadows. So we have the first card going into the shadows. And we get replaced with this now which is an event. This is an interesting thing now. This is not a good one. Uh, so it just says, destroy any cards adjacent to lightning strike in the center line, then add this card to the shadows. So that's bad. So this Book of the Occult is because it's adjacent, will be destroyed. So this goes into the crypt. And then lightning strike then goes into the shadows itself. So we have two cards in the shadows. And we will bring out two new cards. So we have the uh, a location now anytime a location enters the center line roll the omen die and if an omen shows up it goes into the shadows it was a four which is fine it didn't and then we have this vengeful spirit which is a minion as well so um let's take a look at this location because sometimes there are cards that say remain in play so um, when we have this discard to cancel a shocking discovery or to protect a card meaning prevent it from being destroyed so that could be useful all right, so uh, we've done all of our stuff here. Let's see what Argo Blackwell has in store for his turn. So we have, uh, let's see, one, two, three strengthful, uh, strength of combat. We have this honor, which will give him one and then allow him to draw a card. So we're going to have to uh, shuffle up our deck and draw a new card, which is a strength of spirit. And we have this plan of attack, which is going to only give us two towards fighting the villain. I don't think we even have enough for the villain. And then, um, oh boy, let's see. And then I don't know if I really, I'm not going to play this card, this Vengeful Succubus. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in my discard pile. However, this Vengeful Spirit down at the end, the minion, um, oh, it has another strike effect. Let's see. Well, I need to get rid of this because I don't want it to go away. It's not a roaming one, but I do want it to get taken care of. Um, however, that's going to have me destroy another card. Um, at this point, I think I'm going to leave that particular minion there. What I'm going to do is I am need to start building up some of my skills. I'm actually going to use my... Uh, Let's see. I was debating on if I wanted to use this, these to get training cards or if I actually wanted to go after this event here. This is draw a card, then you may destroy a card from your hand or discard pile. And that would cost me two... 
Hmm, I think I'm going to go ahead and take these three strength of combat, and I'm going to discard them, and I'm actually going to go after something that I'm weak in. I need to build up my spirit, so I will go ahead and get an intuitive hunch. This will go into my discard pile. And then over here, um, I have uh, a one cunning. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I don't have anything. I just have two of something. Uh, not enough to do anything, so these cards are going to go into the discard pile. Sorry about that. Uh, that is the end of Argo Blackwell's turn. So he's going to draw up six cards, which he has right here. Then let's go over and see what Thomas Harrow is actually has in store for us. So we have a Strength of Combat and a Cunning and another combat, and a spirit, and another spirit, and another spirit. So we have three spirit, two strength, and one cunning. Um, allies, are there any allies out there? There are no allies out there at this point. Um, so looking at what we have, um, I don't have enough for any of those things. Uh, so let's see, we ended up giving up, Thomas Harrow ended up giving up a combat card, had to destroy it before... So we're going to go ahead and spend three of our spirit uh, in order to get a tactical strike, which will give us two strength. So that will be good. We'll have a little. We'll beef up our combat ability here, and uh, the rest of these cards will go into the discard pile, and we will draw six new ones over here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and we'll have to shuffle these up and get another card into his deck here. All right, back to Argo Blackwell's turn. And again, now we will go down the row, look at this for the minions. We rolled a die and we rolled an omen. So this card now goes into the shadows. We have three in the shadows and a new card comes out. Now, this is also a minion. However, this particular one we do not have to roll the uh, omen die for it because that's just at the beginning of the turn, which we did. So now, let's look and see what we have. We have a strength of spirit, strength of combat, strength of cunning. Then we have this other one that is going to give us uh, one spirit and we get to draw a card. And the first time that I play a minion each turn, I get to draw a card, so I'll get to draw two cards basically one for playing the minion, the other one for the ability. So we will have, there's one there and one there. Okay, so we have another strength of spirit. Then we have an honor of one and drawing a card. And we have another honor of one drawing a card. And then we have two strength and we have another cunning. So let's see, we have a total of two strength and actually three strength, we have three spirit, and we have two cunning plus more stuff. So now, if I wanted to, I think what we're going to end up, I'm going to end up trying to go after this uh, slasher from below, um, because it's going to require five plus whatever I'm going to do. I'm gonna to have to roll, and I'm gonna to need to add additional combat. Well, I have three combat here, so I think that that's going to be uh, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to essentially use my five, I'm going to use five of my spirit. So I have these I'm using as spirit, so I'll put those in the discard pile. Now, when I fight this, I have to roll the omen die, and the slasher below requires that much addition, extra combat for that turn. I rolled an omen, so that is going to be a zero. So I actually have been able to defeat the slasher from below. So I'm going to take this card and I'm going to put it under my character card and this will be worth six investigation points at the end of the game. Now, I still have plenty of things to be able to purchase in this row on my turn. Besides fighting that, I still have three strength and two cunning left out there. So, um, if I would like to, um, let's see, I could try to continue to boost up some of my other stats, which I think I'm going to do. I'm going to take my street three strength of combat, 
and I am going to go ahead and gather up another one of these intuitive hunches and put it in my discard pile. And these will go into my discard pile. So um, now at the end of his turn, we will go ahead and return, reveal a new villain, which is the Necromancer. So here's an interesting thing now. Um, all minions count as roaming, and then when we fight him, add any minions in the center line of the shadows. And he is going to require four cunning, three strength, I mean four spirit, three strength, and two cunning in order to fight him. Well, here's the thing. We want to make sure that there's not a lot of minions in the shadows when we go to fight him. And now, meaning that all of the minions are roaming, that at the end of this turn, if somebody doesn't pick up that poltergeist, he is going to uh, go into the shadows as well. So, let's. we're going to finish up with Thomas Harrow's turn, and uh, we'll see what's going to happen here. So, let's look. What do we have? We have um, a strength of combat, another combat, we have a wild there, we have a cunning, we have another cunning, we have another cunning. So we potentially have four, uh, four cunning, and uh, there's no allies that are out there, so I think at this point we're going to get this spread out. We'll take two of our cunning and one of our strength, and put this into our discard pile here and put this out up oh, there's another minion the masked assassin and i think what i'm going to do in order to save a card from going to the shadows is i'm going to use this as one strength one cunning and one spirit to fight the hung oh actually i can't do that on the hungry dead i'm not able to destroy a minion and i'm trying to remember if i had gone back and oh i did destroy a minion before that was uh, something that I couldn't do. I guess I'll have to bring that card out of the there, and we'll just go ahead and put it back into the uh, bottom of the deck. I forgot about that. That was one thing that was a change between Dark Gothic and the um, Colonial Horrors, that I cannot destroy uh, minions. So, um, at this point, I see a card that's out there... Um, I think we're just going to go ahead and destroy this one event here, and we'll put another card out in its place, which is the Book of Death. Um, couldn't really do anything else on that particular turn. Unfortunately, now, at the end of his turn, this particular minion is going to roam off and go into the, um, into the shadows. This one is going to move over, and we will have a new card that comes out here that is an ally. So, uh, I think right now we're going to wrap up this particular episode. Uh, I'm sorry if I made a couple of little boo-boos there, but um, there were just some things that I was trying to remember the difference between the Colonial Horror and the original, and that was the one with the, with the Hungry Dead. But hopefully you're enjoying this playthrough so far. Uh, Argo Blackwell has defeated the first villain, and uh, Thomas Harrow is uh, holding his own in trying to be able to boost up his skills to be able to contribute to the fight as well. So anyways, guys, thank you for uh, watching. Make sure you tune in for the next episode as we continue playing Dark Gothic Colonial Horror.